Hey y'all, I'm trying to find uh, one of the things from... <sighs> Day three, where amazing things like Myeongdong, Kalgutsu, and uh, going to see temples happen and whatnot. Uh, I was looking through some of the things that I had in my little trinket bag. I brought back a lot of random doodads like uh <laughs> just menus i told you it was just abundance of food so this was like for a spa and this was the the city card that whitney gave me so that i could get back to uh financial district oh oh i'm gonna have a moment look at that oh my god you guys i got the soul tower guidebook in english and Korean. More than likely, I got it in here in Spanish too. Oh, love and action. A place where your love comes true. Oh, you guys. One of the two major things I wanted to do one was go to Seoul Tower because I wanted to put a love lock up there, and two, go to Pusan, which is like the city of my heart. I don't know why, I can't make sense out of it. It's not like I had ever been up until that point in time, but I had a real affinity for that area. So those two things happen and we'll get to Busan. But for now, let's focus on day three. Yes, we started it with the amazing buffet at New Cook J Hotel. And I tell you, I really ate a lot of abalone porridge. Like it, it's so good. I ate way too much of it and a lot of kimchi. And then uh, we decided we would go to one of the shopping districts before we would make our way to Seoul Tower. Day three, we are shopping and I can't handle it because the things are would all- Would you have found it for three bucks anywhere in the US? I, I would have possibly not found it for three bucks anywhere in the US, but look at all of this magic, just lanes and lanes of stuff for me to fully waste my money on. I'm so eager to do this. <laughs> The amount of stuff, K-pop, that I could buy for dirt cheap out there, like, it makes no sense. Like, if I had the, the financial wherewithal to just fly out there once a quarter and stack up on stuff, I would. I was getting albums and things that I'm paying 40 to 50 bucks here because they're limited edition or fan club only things that were just sitting there for 7 bucks and 12 bucks. It was too much. Um, Christina gave me a whole bunch of money and was like, look, grab whatever you can. I have a list. And I got almost everything on it and got it back through customs with no issues and still had money to give back to her. It's insane. I have some of the uh, Korean wands still sitting in my bedroom right now um, for nostalgic purposes and too. I'll be spending it sometime soon. There's no way I just went to this country just one time. I'm extremely determined to get up there we just got off of the itty bitty teensy weensy. Just crazy. Leave me alone. I'm tired though. It's undeniable. We're grabbing cool stuff in the city. I got this lovely uh, traditional Korean dining set to bring back to my family here in Houston and a few other trinkets. But I'm sleepy. And I'm evil when I'm sleepy. So we start making our way towards Seoul Tower and I can just feel my heart welling up like oh man we're going one of the few k-dramas i've actually seen had a moment here oh i was gonna have my own airs moment on the little little airlift i really didn't i really didn't have a, a airs moment I, I actually had a sleepy and i just wanted to get a montage of, of imagery moment so that's what really happened
get up there and I had intentions while I was here in the States to order a particular custom made uh, love lot. Korea is not the only place that, that does love lots. There's many other countries and many other cities. But this was really, really important to me and I was missing a lot. But I was okay with it. We got to one of the areas towards your uh, travels to the tower, and they had some love locks there. Well, I had a couple of wands on me, but Patrick Opal was like, it's fine, I'll totally get it. So he grabs a pink one for me, and the lady at the register says, you know, the markers are obviously here, write what you want on there. So the most logical thing was to write what mattered most to me. Okay. I didn't order the lock that I wanted, but this one is just as good. Read what it says, McGuala's. See? We totally made it. So I found a clean spot amongst all the other ones. <laughs> I keep these keys in my bedroom near some other very, uh, very, very important trinkets to me. These stupid little made in China. <laughs> Keys. Um, <laughs> these keys mean so much to me, and I was was overwhelmed by how how big of a deal it was for me to put a lock up there that was totally for us, and it says it's for us. Like it just, I have no words for it. My heart was was so deeply moved by that to be able to do that and um one day hopefully sooner than later i'll be able to go back and find where i put the lock because i do remember and see if my key still fits see if time hasn't corroded the the insert and all that good stuff hopefully before it comes to a point where they cut it down but there's millions of locks there so I think I can actually be okay. I'm sure some of this will be out of segmented time, but I mean, hey, y'all weren't there, so you don't know the real order. But I know we ate at Food Clock, and it was a lot of schools doing their um, doing their field trips at Seoul Tower. So we ate at uh, Food Clock, which is one of the restaurants that's there, and got more pictures and just kind of chit-chat and whatnot. And then we made plans to go back down and... Um, see the changing of the guards at one of the gates. Now, what I learned uh, by going to the main museum in Seoul is that Seoul in its entirety was a kingdom, like I said in one of the previous videos. So there's various gates and uh, various historical points that you can stop at and learn quite a bit. So we go and see the changing of the guards and whatnot, and we're walking through a portion of the kingdom and looking at the architectural structure and, and learning about the importance of having the king walk in the middle of the aisle when they're walking amongst the grounds and whatnot and a group of students start pulling us one by one they give patrick opa first and i guess they go off and take pictures with them and he comes back and he draws the conclusion like okay it's probably a school project the kids are here they need to find a foreigner so you know this is kind of cool. Well, then they go and get Alita on me. And she goes and takes a picture with them and whatnot. And then we make our way over to an area where the river was flowing. Um, there's water all throughout uh, the areas that we were in. And so, I mean, seriously, the country is surrounded by three bodies of water. So it's, it's everywhere. Um, they get me. And I start speaking Korean with the kids. And they flip out. And they're like, oh, my gosh. You know, where are you from? How do you know Korean and all that? And I tell them I'm a teacher and things of that sort. And they're like, well, do you teach here? And I'm like, no, uh, I'm yeah, like, not yet and all that and whatnot. We take a picture. And I look like one of the students aside from my skin tone. But it's a group of us all smashed together. And I'm blended in in there. And the kids, they gifted me with this little traditional Korean drum. It was on one of their backpacks. And I denied it three times because that's proper etiquette. It's the formal informal etiquette, if you will. If a Korean gifts you, you deny it three times and then you accept it thereafter. So I denied, denied, denied. And then, oh, no, can tell not all. No, no, no. And they gave it to me with their broken English and my jacked up Korean. And it was this amazing cultural mashup moment with 
us. A generation of people who might have only seen African Americans on TV or YouTube for that matter. And yes, there are Africans and Africans and other minority cultures in South Korea, but this might have been their only moment. So it was really, really cool. Um, one of the other things I remember the most, this little place right here, this place, Mangdong Kalguksu. We were walking, we were hungry. It's places to eat all over the place. So the issue is not what do you want to eat, it's where do you want to eat. This place was pretty much the size of the computer room I'm in right now. And they had amazing kalguksu. It was so good. And obviously fresh homemade, like nothing you get in America unless you know a Korean restaurant that actually has Koreans in the kitchen, not Hispanics, like some of the ones down here. I know the difference in the recipe now. I know. <laughs> it was a wonderful day. It was an emotional day. And the last bit of rest I would get before we traveled down by train to beautiful, beautiful Busan. So that's the next story. All right. Bye, y'all.